So what am I up to tonight? Well, a uh, very highly respected friend of mine is having a, uh, a bit of a party coming up tomorrow. And uh, he's uh, terminally ill, so I've decided that uh, I should pull out some of my best work. So I've been uh, at this for a while. This is a mould to cast white metal, and I am leaving this a little bit blurred just to protect his identity a bit here. But uh, this is his uh, clan um, clan pin, if you will. Um, and I'm going to be casting this into a belt buckle. I've also got a couple of other things I've been meaning to do for him uh, for a while. And uh, in any normal situation, I'd probably draw this up whilst I was doing some screen capture. And you could see me working in the process and probably my apprentice helping. Uh, today is a bit of a rush job because I'm only just getting to start this and it's now 7.40pm so I'm going to have to work fairly efficiently if I'm going to get all my tasks done. Well it's time to hit the workshop. It's a bit dark out here at this time of night and my workshop is in a dismal state as I've been crooked for a few weeks and I've just been dumping stuff on my workbench. So uh, yeah, I had to do some cleaning up before I can even think about using that laser cutter. <sighs> it's always fun leaving last minute jobs. Well, I guess it's time to get cleaning up. time wasted but uh let's see how we go up here or fire up the workshop machine um no sound card today uh this machine didn't actually come with a sound card it's an old uh workstation machine um i think that should be monitor power we should be good now we're going to piss this box of stuff off out of the way the camera can come with it let's move over the back here you know what, while I've got the cleaning stuff out, let's give the top of the laser cutter a bit of a quick wipe down. It's a little dusty on the outside at least. The inside's quite clean. Alright, now I need to start firing things up. Sneak over into the corner here with my horrible double adapter. Compressor. We've got air. And we need laser. All right, we'll let everything catch up and uh, we'll be back when it's a bit less noisy. So the air compressor is caught up, which makes it a bit less noisy. We're just going to check our autofocus here for a minute. I've already got a sheet loaded in here, so I plan to uh, just work with that existing sheet for the time being. Here we go, we're focused. Right, I better get a design loaded up now. And just before I load the design up, I uh, went to Super Cheap and picked myself up a uh, pack of budget underwear, uh, also known as uh, cleaning rags or workshop rags. Um, I need proper cotton stuff for polishing these things, uh, especially white metal. Uh, nothing else seems to really do the job. And uh, I think I'm going to need a new desktop soon, um, playing with resin and graphite. Not a good uh, combination. Again, I'm sorry for the background noise. I'm going to say that a lot in this. Uh, this is a side project I need to do at the same time. Um, this is going to be fitting this uh, hunk of steel that uh, has a tip on it. I'll be probably cleaning that up. Um, he wanted this for, um, I think, either a fire poker or doing something with a pig on a spit. I'm not quite sure, but he wanted two of these. So I'm making some handles up. I'm going to cut them first so I can assemble them uh, whilst the metal's heating up. Alright, so we're back over at the laser cutter. We're about ready to commence the cut. I'm not going to get too uh, into this bit. This is not the main event, so to speak. Um, and I don't really have the battery life to uh, record the whole cut for both of these. And it'll probably turn into a half hour video if I do that. 
So uh, rather than that, I'll just cut to having those bits uh, already finished. Now it's really noisy in the background here, but uh, what I'm doing right here, I'm heating up a, uh, one of my ingots of white metal, uh, mostly because I only use a small amount and I'm nearly out of mini ingots. So I've got to get this nice and hot uh, so I can cut it with a hacksaw easily. And uh, we'll be going to that shortly. Okay, so again it's kind of noisy, but hopefully not as noisy as before. These are the finished parts here. Um, that's number two unit. Um, this is the central piece for the number one unit. These are three millimeter threaded inserts uh, that I'm inserting in. And I have a bunch of three mil nuts and bolts. I probably won't need the nuts. Um, we'll wander all the way over here. And we'll see, I've sprayed some um, stain and varnish, um, some dark looking stuff, uh, onto the MDF timber. It brings out the grain a little bit, not that there's really any great grain in MDF, but uh, it does make it look uh, more, I don't know, authentic if you will. Uh, but anyway, once they're dried, I'll assemble them, um, and that will happen whilst the next design is going on in this laser cutter. Uh, what you saw me doing earlier, uh, which was heating up this ingot on the flame. Uh, I'm not sure how much you could hear, so I'm repeating this. Uh, these are the ingots which are still somewhat warm. At the moment, uh, little chunks of shiny white metal. This is very close to Babbitt metal. It's about 98% tin. Um, I'm not sure what grade this was, but it should be something very similar to Microid X. It was uh, melted out of some bearings uh, that come out of a briquette press uh, in where is it? Out the back of Morwell if you know where that is so this is all recycled stuff and I've got um, a little bit from another source which we believe is DSL um, if you're familiar with the white metal uh, versions or compounds one of the two um, this was also a uh, what I used to make the plaque for my brother. This was a reject, it bulged in the middle. Uh, but yes, I did a memorial plaque uh, for my late brother, uh, for my parents, um, which is how that came about, out of the same material. But uh, nonetheless, this is about making a belt buckle. So let's get on with actually building the buckle. stuff's done and I'm sorry if uh, it's been a bit hard to hear me in some of the other videos I haven't had a lot of choice around this um, we'll put them aside there for the low priority project 
a high priority one is this one. Let's see, what have we got going here? We've got several different layers to the mould. So this one is mirrored, obviously. We're going to cast it, so we'll have the mirror image when it comes off. That's our detail layer, that's the very bottom. <clears throat> we have this flange here which will make up the shape of the buckle. Um, then we have this layer here. It's this layer, it's uh, designed to create the two little posts uh, that will hold up, or that will make the little square recess for the belt itself. Uh, in previous designs I've just had a little pillar and I've laid a piece of wire through it and then bent it around later. I'm trying something new this time and of course to meet the thickness of the belt I need more than one layer there uh, so that's going to come up and it's also creating the peg and also the pouring hole um, to form that. These sections are separated so that I can remove them um, after the fact it makes it a little easier to remove from the mould. Then we have this layer here with a crossbar that's creating the top layer of the buckle recess and then the final layer here that holds it all together and you can see here the hole is a little bigger to facilitate uh, molding and there's a couple of air vent holes here as well uh, one thing I will be doing is putting a screw through here with several of these threaded inserts so that they end up cast into the pillar and that will mean that I can fit uh, whatever type of uh, fixing bolt or screw I like as long as it has a, an M3 or a 3mm metric thread so uh, the next thing I've got to do now is find some graphite and work that into the mould. I'm going to have to make this little section of the video quick. I've just had a visitor arrive. But I'll demonstrate briefly how I get the graphite in here. It's highly technical. Work it in with a finger and I have a toothbrush over the back that I use as well. So we'll continue working this all in. And I'll go and entertain my guest and commence pouring on video a little bit later. mould mostly assembled. And it occurs to me at this point, I should probably explain to you guys that yes, I am actually using MDF to, call, to pour molten metal into and yes, it doesn't explode violently into flames it actually works pretty well, especially with a bit of graphite um, yes, and I should probably be using a proper spanner or socket and whatnot at this point um, but since the metal is now molten a little bit ahead of schedule I'm in a bit of a rush to get this sorted out, so I haven't had time to go and get all the proper parts and tools. But this should cast relatively well. So what I'm going to do here, I'm probably going to cut halfway through this bit here. And we'll jump to the skimming of the white metal or whatever stage I arrive at. Um, Next, I guess, is the word I'm looking for. I'm not good at multitasking, guys. I'm sorry. Anyway, I'll be back. So in the next moment. step here, I need to get this positioned in the vise. Now, um, I'm going to use a rather unusual technique. I've seen in casting workshops or machine shops that they use um, this special fiberglass putty that's uh, used for casting high temperature metal. I've gone a slightly different route. I used blue tack. Um, so that seems to work quite well. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to form a nice big bund here. Now being mindful of my vent holes as well. Now metal will come pouring out of those vent holes um, but the idea here is to create a little bit of hydraulic pressure by having a nice big header on top. Um, so I think, where's my other vent hole? I'm going to include my vent holes here actually. Um, because I think that will probably do the job that I intended it to do. But yes, Blue Tack is, believe it or not, quite capable of holding up to about 500 degrees. Right, so I've done the metal skimming. We're about to pour. And I have a bit of an audience, but that's alright. Now I need a hammer before I do the pouring. There. And I need this guy. Alright, let's go and pour metal.
let that bubble away for a moment and chuck it in got back in the pot all right all right now we let it cool for a little while okay so i'm giving it a few more minutes it's still probably quite hot as you can see and i have i'm using my um my filming glove with the finger out so i can use capacitive touch screens because glove mode sucks so we're going to try and disconnect this top bit here and that will all go back in the melting pot all right we'll pick you back up here this is <laughs> insanely hot for our exposed fingers so it's all good now the thing is I don't this is what they call pudding phase or a little bit past it um, it's where the consistency of the metal is somewhat like pudding now this is where the interesting bit comes in I've got to remove these screws um, and not destroy the thing in the process uh, because I leave it too long the glue and the MDF will start to re-solidify and that will glue the layers and it'll make removing it from the mold very challenging Alright, so I have gloves off. I'm going to have to put them back on in a second because everything's still quite hot, but all the screws are removed at the very least. Let's get the safety first things going. And yes, these are TIG welding gloves. Let's see if I can move it well. The top half is separated very nicely. Well, that looks very, very clean. The detail has come off perfectly. Now the next bit is removing all of the other layers, which I'm going to do on the anvil over here. And uh, this is not going to come off easy, so we'll we'll cut straight back to when we've got that out. Well, this is the uh, product out of the mold. I can see a couple of little hiccups where I forgot to adjust a few things, but this is a one-off. I haven't got time to redo it. And I forgot to drop in my threaded inserts, but we will survive. Next stop is over on the rag wheel over here. And we're going to polish that up. And I don't really have time to montage the polishing, so I'll just show you the end product. Okay, so we've got... A polished product here you can probably see it's kind of shiny I have taken the time to polish the rear of it um, we'll fit it onto a belt and we'll fit this stub in and uh, we should be pretty well done okay so I've got things mostly polished up as we saw before and I have now drilled a hole in here that is not strictly center those of you with OCD you should look away um, I had intended to have the screw and these threaded inserts already in the mold, but uh, as a result of being probably distracted from my visitor, that's my excuse and I'm sticking to it, I forgot to add them. So what I'm doing now is screwing my threaded inserts onto a screw, which I'm going to insert into this hole, and uh, I'm going to hammer the inserts in. And the hole is just a smidgen uh, bigger than these threaded inserts. I'm sorry you can't see me manipulating this so tiny. But more importantly, that screw comes right out now. And then we'll put a nice little shorty in there and that will create our little belt loop hook. And I'll grind off this other bit in a moment. We'll be right. Back. And just an update on the side project. We're starting to actually assemble this and we're inserting our shaft into the recess. That's what we're calling it. And I'll put some glue in there once I put it together properly. And we'll show a look at that. We'll give you a look at that uh, when it's finished. Alright, well, it's nearly the end of the night for me. And uh, we have a finished fire poker. I'm not sure what he intends to use this for actually, he just wanted the handles made. So um, I've shined it up a little bit and that should do the job. And I've made a spare one for the 
other blade we don't have. And we have our finished buckle, complete with threaded insert and uh, the screw. We'll go and fit this up to a belt inside and have a quick look, but that'll be pretty well finished for the night. So I hope this works. So I'm back inside in the office and uh, I've decided I'm going to uh, take off one of my old, my very, very first buckle design, in fact, uh, is going to come off the belt. And this was made way back in 2012 and it's uh, filled with resin and graphite it's had a bit of a hard life by comparison we have modern work so let's see if this will fit as intended or oh, that could be a problem but I think we can thread that from the other end we'll thread this end of the belt if not there will be some minor adjustments These guys might just squeeze through. Maybe not. Well, I think there's some minor adjustments in order. Okay, so a few minor adjustments later, and it all fits. We should be even be able to uh, thread this back through itself. And you can pull this back and hook it through a loop. We have a nice looking belt. There we go. Hopefully he'll be happy with that. We'll see, I guess. Anyway, uh, this video was a few years in the making, so uh, yeah, we hope that you enjoy it, and I um, hope you didn't get too bored with all the laser cutting montages. But we'll see you again uh, next time.